What's happening in Hardscapers? Today we're going to be talking about efflorescence, this white residue that we see sometimes on the surface of concrete products like pavers, retaining walls, its causes, why it happens, and how we can reduce the likelihood of it coming through, and how you can actually go about cleaning this. Let's get into this. So efflorescence is a white residue that you'll see on the surface of concrete products. It's a natural occurring product of Portland cement. So Portland cement will be in pavers, in retaining wall products. And this is not necessarily a product defect, though when seen in a large amount, you should definitely bring it up to your supplier or the manufacturer rep to let them know that this is happening because it shouldn't be showing up in mass quantities on your paver products, on your retaining wall immediately off the pallet. If it does show up years down the road or months down the road, it's likely a problem in terms of drainage that we're gonna talk about later. But if it is on the pallet, in that product as you're laying it, you should definitely bring it up to your supplier or to a manufacturer rep. But essentially what efflorescence is, is a lime or salt or other mineral type deposit within the concrete itself. And when moisture is present on the surface, of these products. And that moisture works its way through the pores of the concrete. It dissolves these. And the only way for them to come out is when that product dries. And when it dries, it'll pull that moisture up through the product, and then it will leave these deposits on the surface of the product itself, which is why you get that white residue. This can be seen on the face of a retaining wall or on the surface of pavers, slabs, whatever it might be. So that's just what causes it in general. It is not a product defect, but you would want to bring it up, like I said, to your supplier or manufacturer rep if it is in a large quantity on the product that you're installing. After installation, you may see a little bit showing up, but this is easily cleaned. And you can use an acid type wash to be able to remove this. There's many different suppliers out there that that manufacture an efflorescence cleaner. And essentially what you would be doing is you would be diluting this cleaner with water and applying it to the surface, letting it sit, not letting it dry, and scrubbing with a hard bristle brush to be able to get this off the surface of these products. This is an acid wash, so you definitely don't want it to sit too long on the surface of the pavers, and you'll definitely want to apply it while the pavers are wet. You also want to maybe cover up foliage around the area, but essentially just follow the manufacturer's instructions on the bottle of the product that you're using, because this might vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Prior to doing any sealing, you'll also want to make sure that you do clean this efflorescence. You do not want to seal with efflorescence present on the surface of the pavers. Doing this will just trap that onto the surface and then it'll be more difficult to pull that out. You'll essentially have to strip the sealer off the surface to be able to get at that efflorescence to clean it and then reseal. Once the pavers are sealed, you do not have the same problem with efflorescence because there's no moisture working its way into the stone with that sealer being applied. The sealer should be breathable, meaning water won't make its way down into the paver, but water will be able to make its way out through the surface of the paver if there's any water present there. Additionally, some paver manufacturers are creating products that are factory sealed. So when they become factory sealed, you don't have the same efflorescence problem when they get to you. Efflorescence may reappear time and time again, and this points to causes besides just the product, maybe a product defect, but more likely an installation defect on the installer side of things. If the paver project is not sufficiently sloped, a one eighth of an inch per foot slope to one quarter of an inch per foot slope. Water will sit on the surface and work its way down into those pavers, dissolving those minerals and then working their way to the surface when that surface dries. So if water is consistently present on the surface of these pavers, the efflorescence will continuously appear. So slope is such an important part of solving this efflorescence problem. Additionally, poor drainage. So if you're using a dense graded aggregate it like stone dust, which does not allow water to drain freely through it. Sometimes you call this chip dust, limestone screenings, whatever you might call it. It's essentially chips of stone all the way down to fines. And if this is used as a bedding layer or even worse, 
as the actual base. You'll see that water will just sit there below the surface of the pavers and with no other way to work its way through that base system, it will continuously work its way out through the surface of the pavers, once again, dissolving those minerals and bringing them to the surface of those pavers as that pavement dries. This is just one of many problems that you'll have if you're using stone dust or if stone dust was used for the project. You'll also see this maybe even on the face of retaining walls. And in this instance, this is caused by water being in behind the retaining wall and working its way through the face of the retaining wall because there's not proper drainage in behind the retaining wall. With retaining wall drainage, we are using a three quarter inch angular crushed stone behind that retaining wall at a minimum depth of 12 inches. This allows for any water that works its way in behind the wall to move its way down through that retaining wall and into a perforated drainage pipe that will exfiltrate that water out of the system from in behind that wall, wherever that might be, whether that's through the face of the wall or into a lower area beyond the wall. Drainage is extremely important for retaining walls, not just for preventing efflorescence, but in preventing hydrostatic pressure because that hydrostatic pressure will push that wall forward. So essentially, if you're seeing efflorescence problems with retaining walls, you're likely also seeing that retaining wall leaning forward because there's that presence of hydrostatic pressure in behind the wall due to poor drainage. And with no other area for water to move in that system, that water will work its way through the face of that retaining wall again dissolving those minerals in the pores of that concrete and working its way through to the face of that retaining wall leaving that white residue that is efflorescence cleaning this efflorescence will work but with nothing being done in behind that retaining wall to prevent this from happening in the future that efflorescence will continuously work its way to the face of that retaining wall or even worse that retaining wall will continuously be pushed forward due to that hydrostatic pressure and we'll see a failure of that retaining wall prior to signing up a client you might want to have that efflorescence conversation, whether that's worked into your pricing that you will clean the efflorescence on the surface of the pavers or letting the client know that efflorescence is a white residue that is a natural byproduct of Portland cement. And we may have some efflorescence on the surface of your product. And this is our price for cleaning that from the surface because we don't know whether or not the product that we get delivered will have this efflorescence on it or not. In small quantities, efflorescence will likely work its way out from that surface with rainfalls or with minor scrubbing. In worst case scenarios, you will have to purchase that acid wash and efflorescence cleaner from a manufacturer and diluting it to be able to dissolve that efflorescence and scrubbing with a hard bristle brush to remove that. I hope this video has helped explain what efflorescence is, what causes it, how to prevent it and how to clean it. If you have any further questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'll respond to anybody and everybody. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.